Hello, uh, I'm here at the uh, CACU headquarters and I just wanted to do a, um, a quick uh, info video on how to install the rudder kit on the uh, CACU Wahoo here. So um, first I just want to tell you everything you're going to need. We use uh, on the CACU Wahoo, we use Smart Track foot braces. Uh, they're the best in the industry. So uh, we don't cut corners here on uh, knockoff stuff. So uh, uh, we just need to give you a little info on, on these. We use an aluminum frame, Smart Track foot brace. Uh, this is called the Smart Track Flow rudder system. So just to tell you a little bit about what you're going to need, uh, if you do it, you can uh, order a, a, just a regular Smart Track Flow rudder system. There are a couple key pieces for the Wahoo that are a little different from the regular package. Uh, we got a half inch spacer that um, we like to use in this and we'll show you later um, what that's used for. There's also a little bracket that goes on the back that holds the uh, blade housing pin. And also on ours, we use this threaded in, uh, pin in it, which uh, the regular one, the regular system doesn't come with this threaded pin. I like the threaded pin because you just kind of nut it on there and then you can uh, unbolt it and pull it off nice and easy. Uh, for transport and everything, make sure your, your rudder uh, blade doesn't get damaged in transport. So, key, those are two of the key pieces that come uh, with the system uh, for the Wahoo. So if you do order one, you can always just reach out to us and we can get you the couple key pieces that you need. Otherwise, you can uh, talk to us and get the, the system set up the way uh, with those key pieces. This is the blade housing for the Smart Track Flow. If you notice, it's got a spring set up in it. So when you put this knob in here, you want to make sure you get the tension right so that the blade wants to spring into place. That way when you release the, the rope, it automatically goes down. And, uh, and this also allows when you go over rocks or um, logs, whatever, if you hit something in the water, it can swing up and then it'll go back into place. Uh, so you need, the system comes with two uh, toe pedals here. The toe pedals hook into the foot braces, which we will show that later, uh, but these allow for you to be able to just steer with your toe, so you're not pushing your feet, you know, like this from a, a regular rudder system. It comes with a little bag of parts, so you want to make sure you have all this. It's got the rope and it's got some uh, different uh, pieces in there for hooking the cables up and stuff, so this is a little bag that comes in there. Uh, you need the cable housing lines. These are little springs that go up inside the foot braces so that uh, you can, uh, this gives the tension on on the pedal to make sure it comes up. Which we'll get into more detail with all that later. There's two of these that come with it which are your tension adjusters for your cable. Of course you have to have your cable. No rope here. Uh, rope doesn't work very good. Uh, the knockoffs of this system which are very cheesy if you ask me, that's why I did not buy them for my boats. I don't do cheesy stuff. I want good quality. Uh, but these are the uh, steel cables that come with the system. And the tools you're going to need, I have this uh, galvanized steel wire that I use, uh, which you'll see later why I use that, but that's a very important part. Uh, you need a couple quarter 20 bolts. You need some crimpers. Allen key set, and uh, there's three key drill bit sizes that I use. There's a, I find the smallest one I can. I'll show you why later. Uh, this is a 7 seconds drill bit and a 5 16 drill bit. Uh, then we have one more rope housing. This is for deploying your rudder and, uh, and pulling the rudder up. This uh, holds the rope, so it's a little fatter than the cable housing. Uh, and then of course you always have to have your handy dandy drill. So those are the key pieces that you're going to need. I don't think I left anything out, but uh, if I did, as we go through putting it in, you will see uh, how we use all that stuff. So let's get started. I'm going to start off with drilling the holes for the uh, cable housing. And the way I do that up in this front section is I unscrew this part of the foot brace just to kind of get it down and out of the way. I get my 7 seconds drill bit. 
and I drill the hole at an angle up in this corner right here. So you gotta kind of get your hole started. So at the back area here, you'll notice on the uh, left side you have uh, two little kind of pre put in holes there. They're not, they're not all the way through, they're just markers. So for the cable housing, you want it to be on the outside one. This other one is for the rudder deployment. So with the 730 seconds drill bit, I drill a hole on this one on the right. And then again on the other side. So now I got the drills, the holes drilled. I'm going to take my cable housing and flip it in the hole there. Now this is where that steel wire I showed you comes in handy. I take that steel wire and I stick it through the back hole here. I try and feed it through there as much uh, as straight as possible. The key here on running these housings is to make sure that that housing stays on the outside of the, you want it running right down this line on the outside of the scupper holes and on the outside of the rod holders there. So I run this as straight as possible. And then this is where this back hatch comes in handy. I pull out the bag insert. I reach in here and make sure that that cable comes around that back scupper hole. Feed that up here. Line my black housing. Feed that around the scupper hole and around the rod holder. I take a razor knife and I cut this end at an angle so I get a nice bit of a point on there. I take the little tiny, the smallest little drill bit you can get and I drill a little hole in there. Take the end of my steel cable run it through that hole wrap this and try and make sure it's nice and thin you know you need this to come through that hole nice and easy and then I just pull it through to make things easier for you if you can hold both ends here it sometimes is a lot easier if you got two hands if you got a buddy but I like to keep a little tension on the line as I pull it so that it stays nice and straight and comes out that hole nice. Okay, so now I've got the black housing, which is really the hardest part uh, completed here. It's pulled through. So I'm just gonna snip off the excess on these lines here. Get rid of that. I can screw my foot peg back up where it belongs. Alright, so now how it comes assembling the uh, everything you need for the foot brace. You take the cable uh, tensioner here, you screw it right into this piece here. Now while I'm uh, setting this thing up, I like to screw this in about halfway. That way it gives you uh, some good adjustment uh, each way. I mean, this thing is a key feature if you also notice on uh, uh, knockoffs of this version, they do not have this piece and it's extremely important. Then I take the the pedal, you always want to make sure you got the right side. You want this pulley to be on the outside. So you just clip that in here, raise it up, you take the metal spring pieces here and you slide it up between this the pedal and the um, and the new the toe pedal here. You slide it up in there until it snaps. It's a, got a little piece in there it snaps into. So there's two of them for each pedal. Slide both of those up in there and you are ready. Now see the spring gives it nice tension in there. It's not able to flop around. Okay. 
Now I'm getting ready to do the cables. There's also two pieces here that I forgot to mention in the beginning. These are, uh, I don't know what you call these, but you slide them in the pedal here. And that's key because when you're pulling the cable tight, you want to make sure that this doesn't pull forward as you're trying to get your cables adjusted. So this piece slides in here and now it can't pull past where it's supposed to be set at. So it helps you in setting this. Now I take my metal cable. Make sure you don't have any frays on here. You really want to have some good, um, good cutters that can cut without fraying. So hopefully these ain't getting dull on me. Now I got a nice clean in there. So I want to push this through. Tensioner. Pull it all the way through. These cables are special cables too. They got a little stopper on the end. So that sits right in there and real nice. And then when it comes to feeding it through the pedal itself, you'll feel underneath here there's a, a little slot for it to go through. Feed it through there. Get this out of the way so that you can see. And you'll see the little line guide on the side of the foot brace here. So you want to make sure it follows that guide nice. You bring it through and go over your little pulley here on your tow pilot. Feed it through your black housing. Alright, so now I've got all the cables run through and I've already attached the little bracket here. It just goes in with two bolts, uh, quarter 20 bolts at the back. The little power pole mount here comes in handy dandy right now because it's a nice little place to put all your little parts. You got, uh, I've already opened this bag up and we got all kinds of little parts in here. Some of these parts are on here aren't, aren't necessary for uh, the Wahoo. So we take our, our Smart Track Flow blade housing and we unscrew the nut. This is where that half inch spacer comes in. Put that half inch spacer on here first and slide this on here. A half inch spacer just raises this up good so that the when the cable is hooked up in here it's not rubbing on the kayak so that's why we use it. If you buy one that doesn't have this it will have it a little bit low so it's not going to do too much but uh, I just didn't like it so I went ahead and made a half inch spacer that comes with all of our rudder kits for the Wahoo just to raise it up just a little bit there. Now here we got these uh, little pins and you got a little pulley. You want to stick your pen through the pulley. And you got a little kind of cotter pin ring here. You stick that here. Okay, so now that we've got those pieces on there, um, now you're going to take your cable and you're going to see you got a little, little sleeve right here. You want to go ahead and slide that onto your cable beforehand. And then you got your little crimper piece here. You want to get that on first as well. Slide that just down out of your way. And then feed this through the back of your little pulley here. Once you have fed that through there, you want to it's just getting a little bit frayed here, which makes it kind of a pain. So we're going to go ahead and cut that off. Put that through your crimper piece. Now make sure your pulley's nice and straight before you start doing this because once you crimp that thing down, it is set. 
adjusted the angle there to make sure you can see this good here. So once again I'm making sure that the blade stays straight. I'm pulling that tight, I'm pulling my crimper in nice and tight. Okay, perfect. Now what we do next is go ahead and cut off the slack on this. And we're going to take this piece here and put it over that little end. I want to cut off a little bit more there. I like this rubber piece also to be right here too. I'm very big on a lot of protection stuff. So once you've got that there, you can uh, use a heat gun or you can use a lighter. You just heat it up a little bit. Don't burn your kayak. And it shrinks that rubber piece right down around that end so it keeps it nice and smooth there. And that's how, how you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side and then uh, we will put in the rope for the deployment and a couple finishing touches. Right here behind, beside the seat, that's where you see this little dip for. This is for the, um, for the deployment hose. So I just go ahead and drill that 516 hole again right here. Kind of make sure that it's nice and clean for it to be able to slide in there. So, yep, it's good. So, I just go back to the back and start feeding it through. Okay, so once I got this line through, I bring it up through the hatch again and I go ahead and cut a little bit of an angle on this. It'll help you. So, with this, this hole being right here, you're able to just reach it here. Just we want to make sure that you're on the outside of the scupper hole, uh, holes again and on the outside of that rod holder again. And you can get it right on through there. Alright, so now I've pulled this through here and then I'd, I'd like to take a pair of vice grips and just put on here just to make sure while I'm messing with all this that it doesn't slip back in on me. It can be a pain in the butt trying to feed it back through, especially when you've cut it uh, to the right size. So that vice grip really helps right there. And uh, I like to make sure it's pretty tight in there, so we're going to readjust that a little bit. All right, perfect. And then I just go ahead and cut that off. Now that's good. All right, so now I just go ahead and I take this rope. And one thing that can uh, help you out is if you take a lighter and just kind of uh, heat this up a little bit, it'll make it pretty stiff, so it helps it out when you're feeding it through. So I just start feeding that through. Now we got that through there. I just pull a little bit of excess through here. All right, so we take the end of our rope here and you want to feed it through this little hole here. And you got this little piece here. You want to feed it through there. This little swivel piece. Pull some of that through. And you're just going to take it, and you'll notice this hole here. Push that through here and just tie a little knot on the end. If you want this knot to make sure it stays permanent, you can just heat it up there and it'll kind of melt together. You want to pull that line. There's a little slot on here. You want to pull that line through there. Make sure that's all nice and in the groove. Go to the front, pull your slack through. Now, notice it'll pull the blade up and when you release the rope, the spring automatically pulls it right back down into place. Okay, so now it comes with this little piece right here. We want to install this right here. 
Now this comes with two small bolts with nuts, but believe me, it's very hard to get under there and be able to nut those bolts. So I just get some nice stainless steel screws. Um, they seal up just fine. If you want to make sure of it, you can take a little bit of uh, epoxy and put it on the end of the screw when you go to put it in there, but it'll seal up just fine with the screw. Plus, this kayak's so dry, there ain't no water going to get up on this spot right here. It'll be able to seep in, so... We just screw that in right there. Put our second screw on there. We take our rope and we feed that in there. Now, so when you pull, when you deploy, or want to pull your rudder up out of the water. You just give this a pull, pulls your rudder up, and then you push it down in those slots, and it'll lock your rudder up. When you're ready to release your rudder, you just lift it out of the slots and let it go, and the rudder deploys back into the water. Now I saw the little piece comes with it, so we put this uh, little ball on the end of the rope here. Run it down. Now the rope's all the way down. Uh, the, it's deployed in the water, so you, wanna, you can put this up here as tight as you want. You want to be able to make sure you grab it easy. But uh, go ahead and put a rope little knot right here okay so once I got my knot tied in here now you can just cut this into this rope off and you're good to go there and then just take a lighter and uh, heat up the end of that so it can't fray on you later on and that's parts complete alright so the rudder install is complete and um, it all looks good so just uh, let you know about a couple things here so if you notice that the once you've done this tight, uh, made it all in here, if you've messed up and not made these exactly tight enough, um, you can adjust the tension with these, uh, with these little screw pieces in here, the cable uh, tensioners. And also, if you happen to notice that your rudder, when it's in its regular state, is not exactly straight, then you can uh, play with the two of these, loosen one, tighten one, and you can end up getting it straight. The great part about this rudder system with the tow pilot system is, now, you're able to adjust the length of these and it still keeps the tension on the cables. So if you happen to have a, a kid or somebody else use your kayak that maybe is not as tall as you or taller than you, they can still be able to adjust these foot pegs to the length that they need and still be able to use the rudder just fine, which is not uh, the way it is with, with other rudder systems, one of the reasons why we really like this one. So this one's complete and uh, I hope that helped you guys out uh, in the case of you needing to, to put a rudder system on the Wahoo. So thank you.